Graphing cubic functions can be simple as long as you know what to look for. And as long as you understand that the basic parent function is y equals x cubed, and y equals x cubed looks like that. And it looks like that because every time you plug a new x value in, it would all the y values, when you plot all the x and y pairs, they would form a curve that looks like that. So I urge you to do that if you're not convinced that it looks like that. But the bottom line is when you look at the functions uh, equation like this, you notice that the a value is the number right out in front. It's being multiplied by the set of parentheses in which it contains the x minus some value h. And then you add on the outside some value k. And this is the hk is the inflection point. The inflection point has coordinates h, k. And the a value is, like I said, that number right out in front. So if we look at this equation here, a minus sign out in front means that a equals negative 1 like that. A 2 right there means that the h value is 2 and the k value is 4. And really what I look at is I look at the original graph parent function that looks like this. And then if the a value is negative, that means I'm going to flip it over the x-axis. So it's a reflection. It's going to open. It's going to it's ultimately decrease from left to right instead of increasing. And then the inflection point didn't change, but now I want to move the inflection point 2 to the right. x minus 2 means h is 2, and we move 2 to the right, so we go 1, 2. And then the k value being 4 means we go up 1, 2, 3, 4 and we have an hk value, and that is the inflection point that has coordinates 2, comma 4. And the graph, since a is negative, the, the graph of the function is going to be decreasing from left to right. And there's our graph. The domain of, is all real numbers. The range is all real numbers. The increasing, no, it's not increasing at all. It's decreasing from negative infinity to positive infinity. Because as x moves from left to right, the y values are always getting smaller. There is no vertex. The slope, we're not going to worry about the slope on this one. It doesn't stay constant. I should say not constant. It's changing. Maybe I would just put that in there. It's changing. It's not constant. Uh, the x-intercepts now, this is a good, good time for us to just kind of explore and remind ourselves, well, how do we solve an equation that has a, something cubed in it? Well. Anytime we're finding an x-intercept like we've done before, we let y equal 0. Then we get an equation that has something cubed plus something else. And if you were to, gra if you were to solve the equation x cubed equals, I don't know, let's say 5, then in order to undo cubed, uh, something being cubed, to undo that, we take the cube root. The cube root of something cubed, they cancel each other out, and uh, we get x. So just x. The cube root of x cubed is x. Cube root of 5 is cannot be simplified anymore, unless you have a calculator. But we're going to leave it as cube root of 5. Now, if we were to have an equation like this, 0 equals negative x cubed plus 5, then we would add x cubed to both sides. So if we were to add x cubed to both sides in this case here, x cubed equals 5, and then we'd proceed like we did, then we would add x minus, minus 2 cubed to both sides. And that's OK to do that. In fact, I mean, if you think about it, x minus 2 is as much of a real number as x is a real number. So you don't want to treat x minus 2 any differently than you would treat an x like over here. But nevertheless, if we get x minus 2 on the left side cubed equals 4 on the right side, then just like we said, we want to take the cube root of both sides. Taking the cube root of both sides, the right side can't be simplified, but the cube root of something cubed, this is the something. It's like this cubed here, cube root cancels that cubed. So those guys, like, those guys like cancel each other out. And we just get x minus 2 equals the cube root of 4. Don't even think about putting a plus or minus there with cube root or any odd root. We don't have plus or minus. It's only when we have squared or any other even root. So we have plus 2 to both sides, and therefore there's no more room there. But we get x equals 2 plus cube root of 4. If you think about it, maybe that 
just to convince you that you don't need a plus or minus, when we had the, um, the square, uh, the x squared, and we, we solved for, uh, so find the x-intercept for the quadratic function, when we find an x-intercept, we actually find that there's one plus or minus radical six over two. This is from the previous problem. One plus or minus something means one plus that thing, oh, and then also one minus that thing. That's two, that's two x-intercepts. And notice, if you look at the graph, the, the graph crosses the x-axis at two different points. That's why there's two solutions to this equation two solutions to this equation because the graph crosses the x-axis twice. Fast forward to this problem here, there's only one solution. If you put two plus or minus cube root of four, then you would have found two solutions to this equation, which means you would have said there were two x-intercepts. But look at the graph, there's only one x-intercept, and it's right there. That x-intercept has coordinates two plus cube root of four, we don't need to know what exactly what that is, comma zero. And so that's what we're going to write right there. So hopefully that helps you understand why we're only going to get one solution to a cubic function where uh, equation, whereas we would have gotten two solutions to the quadratic, as the quadratic would cross the, the x-axis at two points. So hopefully we've uh, clarified that. And the x-intercepts, then again, two x-intercept, two plus cube root of four, comma zero. And then for the y-intercept, where, where, where do we have room for that? y-intercept, we'll do that up here. We let x equal 0, and we solve the resulting equation. 0 minus 2 cubed plus 4. You've got to be careful here. Make sure it matches your graph as well. Negative 2 cubed plus 4. Negative, so negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Negative 2 multiplied by itself three times plus 4. And then we have... Uh, negative negative 8, so that's 8 plus 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. And that matches. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't look for the y-intercept before I drew this, so it's up there somewhere, and yeah, so 12 would be where the graph would cross the y-axis, and so that would be our y-intercept, 0 comma 12. Make sure you're showing your work for not only the y-intercept, but also for the x-intercept maximum and minimum values. If we have a range of all real numbers, then there's no way we can have a max and there's no way we can have a min. And we don't have a, an axis of symmetry either.